Soldiers in the Democratic Republic of Congo patrol villages in Beni, where the armed group Allied Democratic Forces, or ADF, has killed thousands of Congolese in recent years. Two provinces have now been placed under military rule, North Kivu, where rebels, including the ADF, operates, and Ituri, where ethnic militia have been fighting each other, killing civilians and displacing many more. A state of siege was declared by President Felix Tshisekedi last week. He has put the army and police in charge of administrative, court and local policing affairs. Two generals have been appointed as governors, replacing those who were elected. Some human rights activists say they're worried that civil liberties are now at risk. And the forces, often accused of rights violations, corruption and indiscipline, could exploit this new power. We are in uncharted territory and we know how our forces are. We are afraid they may take advantage of the situation. For example, if there is a police raid, they could loot and arrest civilians. But we are also hoping to have a good relationship with them. The security problem here has persisted for many years, with all fighting forces accused of atrocities. This is the result of the latest in a spate of killings. It's a burial of a prominent cleric, Sheikh Ali al-Amin, who was opposed to the ADF and its interpretation of Islamic law. He was killed by gunmen during evening prayers in Beni. His widow says there was no help from the government. They could have protected my husband when he was alive. They did not. I leave it all to God. There have been street protests against the government and the United Nations for not doing enough to keep people safe. Tens of thousands of soldiers, including UN peacekeepers, have been deployed over the years, but they are up against more than a hundred armed groups and have had little success. We have to protect ourselves. We have complained enough to the government. President Chisekedi says his decision to impose a state of siege was prompted by the suffering of those living in the two provinces. People here say they'll wait to see if it makes a difference. But they also worry that without checks and balances, the security forces could easily abuse their mandate. Catherine Soy, Al Jazeera.